Hello everyone, welcome to this recap of Game 4 from the World Championship match between uh, Magnus Carlsen, the world champion, and his challenger, Zach Kayakin, uh, played in New York. And uh, if you did not follow the game for today, you missed a lot. And uh, I appreciate you tuning in to see the opportunity to see this game here in 94 moves of a sheer battle between those two. I'm GM Lasbo Hansen, Don Corleone here at uh, ICC. And it was certainly a pleasure to follow this dramatic game. And no matter what happens in this match going forward, this is certainly one of those games that uh, everybody will remember and it will be analyzed for a long time. Carlsen playing black after a disappointment yesterday uh, was presumed to be under pressure, uh, but he quickly passed out of the opening, outplayed Kayakin in the early middle game, got a nearly winning position in the end game. But just as he had the day before, Kayakin really dug in when it was the most critical. And for the second day running, he managed to escape with a draw, keeping the score equal. 2-2 two, two after four games. So let's start from the top here. And the players repeated for the first five moves. The same moves as in the um, second game with the uh, Kayakin playing white. Uh, the Ropes by Carlsen. A small surprise that he is playing this old variation with A6 rather than the Knight F6 Berlin that he has been championing for so many games. Uh, in the game two game, Kayakin played D3 here, uh, never got any advantage, and that game ended in a, in a draw. Today he keeps following the main line, playing Rook E1, B5, Bishop B3, and Carlsen Castles. And this is very interesting because now Carlsen is toying with the idea of playing the martial variation, which to my knowledge he has never done. But he might have prepared it for this match, where white grabs a pawn in the center, but black gets a lot of counterplay here. The bishop will go to d6, the queen will come to h4. There is 25 moves, at least of theory, in this line. And uh, it's very, very likely that we'll see it in uh, the next game where Kayakin is white, because that is the most challenging approach for white. But Kayakin in this game sidesteps Carlsen's uh, preparation, plays h3, and it allows Carlsen to equalize very, very early on in the game. It, it's a, a bit curious to me that, uh, that uh, Kayakin does not play something more challenging uh, against this, uh, this setup by Carlsen here, because clearly the way he plays it here with pawns on a3, d3, h3, only going to the third rank is certainly not the most challenging uh, trying to refute or at least get an advantage against Black's, uh, Black's setup here. So there, there are rumors out that uh, Kayakin and the Russian Chess Federation has, have spent towards a, a million dollars for, for opening preparation for Kayakin for this match. And um, so far, though, we must say that he, is, he hasn't gotten his money worth, worth yet. So it remains to be seen how he attacks his next white. Because Carson certainly equalized with very simple moves. Basically, just playing in the center here as you're supposed to. So does Kayakin here. And Bishop F8. And this is the first moment where uh, Ron Henley and I, who were commentating live on ICC, did not really follow um, Kayakin's play here. We wanted him to play D4, immediately playing in the center here. Uh, and uh, White may get a slight edge and Again, we might see this in uh, one of the later games in this match. Uh, but Kayakin played knight f1. Uh, and then very timidly, knight h2. That was also a move that we did not really appreciate. We wanted white to go either knight 3 uh, or maybe even knight h4, trying in both cases to use the f5 square for, for white's pieces here. And uh, white may still hope for an edge here. But Kayakin plays it surprisingly timidly here in the early stages of the game, of course, trying to bid some attack on the king side, but 